On this week's Ray Edwards show, I'm interviewing Camille Pardo, who's one of our certified direct response copywriters, and she is a powerhouse. She's a great copywriter. She's a fantastic human being, and she is a ball of energy, as you're about to see. Let's jump into the interview with Camille right now. You are one of the, the best students who has come through our program, and I am so excited about where your writing career is going. And I'm wondering if you'd share the story. When did you know you wanted to be a writer? The very, very beginning. I always wanted to be a writer. Um, I remember being in third grade and writing my own little books and stapling them together, drawing the cover, lining them up on my shelves. I have just always loved words. I'm obsessed with song lyrics. I love storytelling and always wanted to be a writer. But you know, the people around, the people in my life told me that being a writer wasn't practical. And I believed them because, um, all the things, uh, you don't want to be a writer. You're, you're never going to make money. It's not dependable. It's not a good career. It's not for you. You need to pick something that is practical. And so I just took that dream and shoved it way, way, way down. So, um, so that I could be practical instead. And uh, when I got to college, I picked the most practical career of them all. I went into education to become a teacher. And teaching is nothing if not, you know, practical, stable, dependable, um, not glamorous. <laughs> but um, so important. So important. Yes. So important, but it wasn't, man, it wasn't my heart and it should have been my first clue that I was in the wrong place, but, um, teaching always drained me. It was, um, I was good at it and I put my whole our heart into it, but I was always exhausted when it was, uh, you know, like after the day was done, I was just drained. And like I said, I should, should have paid attention to that little clue that I was in the wrong place. Um, so after, you know, a decade, I taught high school and I taught at the university. Um, I think I was in my 30s before I even said out loud that I want to be a writer. That um, I even told my husband, he was surprised. I just, you know, like, like I just secretly always wanted to be a writer. I didn't, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be a teacher. I just picked it because it was practical. And I just believed all those people in my life telling me that this is, this is where I was supposed to be. And so, um, I was obviously drained and unhappy teaching, um, teaching during the pandemic was really miserable. And I just kept like flirting with this idea of like, but maybe, but maybe there's something else that I'm supposed to do and something else for me. And so I, uh, just, I was, flirting around with the idea of, of copywriting. Like maybe this is my in to being a writer, but having it be an actual career, a respectable, stable, I can make money and, um, and not just be like, you know, I'm not going to be the writer who's in a cabin in the woods, um, alone writing that, <laughs> that wasn't going to work for me. And so, um, Ray, I got your book and I started listening to your podcast and it was just like, it was time. And I just knew it. I was going to do my dream and just be what I've always, always, always wanted to be. And so I went all in. I submitted my letter of resignation and I joined your copywriter certification program and like haven't looked back. I I love the the fact that you made the connection of, well, this is a kind of writing you could see being very practical, providing you with an income, but does it also allow you to be creative and enjoy the writing process the way you want to. Yes, absolutely. And that's the funny thing is I'm not drained and exhausted and wiped out at the end of a work day. I really love what I do and I'm excited to get into my office and write. And I'm always taking down little notes of a phrase or an idea that pops into my head. And so it is so copywriting is so creative and there's so much storytelling in it. And so when people find out I'm a writer, of course, they always ask, oh, you write romance novels. I'm like, no, but I'm so captivating in the exact, like I promise. Um, I still get to tell a juicy story every single day. It's just, it's just not in a romance novel with a cheesy cover, but um, 
but I'm still, um, I get to spin words and still tell a story. So yes, it's so, it's so much fun. What was the journey like toward getting certification and what was that? Was it challenging for you at all or? Um, yes. Yes, it was. You know, Ray, your certification program, I looked at a handful um, because I knew that I needed to learn a whole new, coming from education and curriculum and the type of writing that I did, um, I knew I needed to learn so many things. And the cool thing about your copywriting certification program is that all of the things, like you teach it and then we practice it and it gets graded. Okay. So I don't earn a badge unless I know what I'm doing. And that was, here's the funny thing. This is going <laughs> to, this is a little vulnerable, but our very first um, assignment was a short form sales page. And I wrote it. I watched all the training videos. I took notes and I wrote what I thought was a slam dunk sales page. Like I thought it was hot stuff and I turned it in and I did not pass it it was not great. And, um, I, I'm so grateful that I didn't just take one of those little YouTube weekend courses and believe that my writing was really, really good. And it's not that I was a bad writer, but I didn't know copy. I didn't know persuasion and the ins and outs. Um, and so I think I had to rewrite that three times before, <laughs> before I finally got that badge and before I finally passed. And that feedback was, that was so valuable because in my head, I was like, Psh, I got this. This is so, but it's not, <laughs> I was well, not, I wasn't there. <laughs> and that's a, that's a great spirit that you approached it with because we always tell people, well, it is hard to get the certification and it should be because it's worth having. And yes. you know what you're doing when you get certified <laughs> with us. So talk to me about getting clients. How has that worked out for you? What's, what's that journey been like? Oh, okay. Um, I will, my very first month as a certified copywriter, I made $0 and, um, that was so discouraging. But the funny thing is the next month I made a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And now I'm booked like full-time booked, um, really, really like, so it took, honestly, it took me an entire year to go from nothing to full time. And so I wish I could have like just told myself back then, like, Hey, it's okay. If this first month is absolute miserable. Um, you know, I went to, we were in Orlando and you gave a training and you were talking about getting clients and you said the best way to get clients is to show up and serve. And I wrote it down in my notebook and I, it took me a long time to figure out what you meant by that because I'm like showing up and serving. How is that a pitch? How is anyone going to pay me? I don't get it. Ray doesn't know what he's talking about. That's so confusing. Um, and so I just kind of was like, I had it written down and it was always sitting at my desk, but I just, it did not click until in my second month of, of, trying to be a freelance copywriter. Um, I was on a zoom call and I had something to add. And so I unmuted myself and I said something, um, you know, contributed to the discussion. And then I get a little message in the corner, a private message from someone who was also on the call. And they said, can I get your email? I, I really want to talk to you. And she hired me to write copy for her because I'd opened my mouth. Oh my goodness. I did exactly what you said, right? I showed up and I just served and I, um, that has worked over and over and over. So getting your behind into rooms with your ideal client, whether it's networking in person or on a zoom call, show up and serve and open your mouth and share your ideas. And people will be attracted to your energy and your expertise. And I'm not kidding. That has worked so well for me. And I get those little messages all the time of like, Hey, I, I want to meet with you after this. Can I get your, can I get your information? And so you, you absolutely knew what you were talking about. So I don't, um, chase clients with cold pitches. I don't email a hundred people every day. I don't see send DMS on LinkedIn to people. I don't know. Um, I just show up and surf and people find me and it is the coolest. The momentum builds. I promise 
like I said, that first month was $0 and it was very discouraging, but the momentum builds and then you start getting referrals from the people that you helped. And then um, I write for two different agencies right now and the referral, like it's just the momentum builds and it's really awesome. So don't get discouraged, but that advice, like just show up and serve. What kind of Zoom call was that? Um, it was a training. It was an entrepreneur training. I don't, I think you might've even been hosting it actually. I think it might've been in your community, um, and a whole bunch of small business owners. And, um, there was just, I just had a comment and it wasn't even, I don't even remember what I said, but I just had something to add that I knew and that I felt. And that person, and she even said that very first hire, she just said, I liked your energy. And I knew that I wanted to work with you. And mm -hmm. so if you are at home and you're never reaching out and you're never showing up, no one gets to know your energy. No one can see you. And when I started, I started an email list with like 13 people on it and it wasn't fancy, uh, but I started emailing regularly so that stuff I write every day and I publish what I write. Okay. Whether it's on Instagram or LinkedIn or my own email list but you're publishing it. You're putting it out there. It's not just um, me at home wishing someone would hire me. And so you like showing up, get your behind in all those rooms with your ideal client and show up and serve and be that awesome person that they want a message and they want to work with. Um, so it's a lot of putting yourself out there and um, just that first discouraging month. I wish I could have told myself like, just just write every day and publish it and it's going to be fine. So good. So powerful. What's been the hardest part of making the transition going from teaching to being a freelance copywriter? What's been the toughest part? Um, the thing is, it wasn't tough. It has been like just, I can't even tell you a blast there. I have been able to write for people that I have seen on the stage at funnel hacking live. And like, I think I almost screamed, um, when I heard who like some of these big clients are and, um, like it has just been so much fun. It hasn't been hard. And that's why I think I know I'm in the right, I'm in the right place because I don't have to struggle and suffer. I can just like really have fun every day and show up in the best way I can have my dog in here with me sitting at my feet. And, um, it's not, I mean, it took work and effort and putting yourself out there. I'm not going to say that it was like not without, but everything just, it just flows so beautifully when you're in the right place. Well, and you've got such a great perspective on it. You said the first month was zero. Then it was a little bit, then second month, a little bit more. It's yeah. like the law of the farm. Nobody plants a crop. And then tomorrow morning says, where's my corn? Right. It doesn't work that way, but right. you, you got the right approach and you're, you're putting those emails publishing every day. That's so important. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What kinds of things are you writing about? Um, everything, <laughs> anything and everything. So I publish, um, something really awesome. I always save my best stuff for my email list. Um, every single week when I send out a free course free to my email list. Um, that's actually what brings me in the most referrals and the most clicks. Um, and then I just, whether it's something funny that I post to LinkedIn or a conversation that I start on Facebook or, um, it's like this, I just publish every single day, just something. If people ever ask you what you do for a living, then you have to explain to them what copywriting is. Oh, it's so hard. You know, someone asked me the other day and they didn't speak English and I was trying to tell them in Spanish and I'm like, this is already hard in English. And, um, it went, it did not go well. <laughs> I'm trying to explain <laughs> what I do in another language. Um, so no, people don't. Um, the funny thing is a lot of people don't understand what copywriting is, but they read it all day long. It's always in front of them. And so um, every time you open a website or a landing page or an email from anywhere that you've ever shopped, like I promise a copywriter wrote that. And um, if it's really good, it might have been me. Just kidding. But um, <laughs> no, she's not. But, but so we're surrounded by it. But we um, a lot of people don't know what it is. And I even I remember telling my dad that I was getting certified in copywriting and I was learning this new thing. And he's like, oh, so you're going to be like a notary and you'll have a cool stamp. And I was like, 
no, no, but, but so close. <laughs> so close um, enough. Yeah, I know. I'm like, I just write stuff that makes people buy and I tell stories. It's just, you know, little bite-sized stories in, um, in emails, but yes. What's your advice to somebody considering this is a possible new career? What would you say to them? Um, if it's in your heart, just like me, I always wanted to be a writer. Um, you have to pay attention to the things that drain you and the things that light you up. And if writing lights you up, this is a really awesome way to build a career in writing. Um, I also think there's something really cool about going all in. And I didn't have a job on the side. I didn't have my part-time job. And so I didn't have any excuses to not show up and put in the time and put in the effort. And I've seen even copywriters that did the program with, um, with us, Ray, that were, um, still hanging on to their other thing just in case copywriting didn't work out. But the thing is, um, it will work out. You just have to let it. And so I never had excuses and I never was doing something else on the side. I was just all in um, from the beginning. And so it made the the hard times harder, but the good times really, really good. And my family, we have celebrated every single step along the way. The first like time someone paid me $1,000 to do anything, like getting over that like $1,000 project, that was like, um, we celebrated that my first $5,000 month we celebrate. I mean, like you just, um, you have to go all in instead of holding a piece of you back. That's your excuse just in case it doesn't work out. Does that make sense? Like just, just do it. Go all in. Yeah, totally. I'm with you there. So what, what do you do about you? You, you say you're booked up. Do you ever get a chance to take time off, to take vacation? How does that work for you? Oh, of course. Yes. Um, my booked up means I have the amount of work that's comfortable for my schedule. I don't write for 10 hours every day stuck in my office. Um, I'm a mom. I've got three boys and we're having an awesome summer and I will probably take new clients again when school starts. Um, but there is so much freedom in my schedule. I can write whenever I want. And sometimes I write when the inspiration hits, even if it's at 10 o'clock at night and the house is quiet, or sometimes I'll just wake up at five in the morning and come in here in my pajamas and get a bunch of writing done. So there's so much freedom and flexibility. Um, and so I love that I can take on as many clients as I need. And if a project isn't working for me anymore, I can finish it and move on. So there's like just, you know, in education, if you had a student that you didn't like, you were stuck with them the entire semester. And um, <laughs> so I love that, like, I have this freedom. I get to set my prices. I get to choose who I work with. And I get to choose, like, the hours um, of the day. Like, it is the ultimate freedom for someone who used to have to, like, you know, wait to run to the bathroom between classes. Or you can only eat on certain time. Like, I feel like I have this, oh, ultimate freedom. And one of the things I really love and admire about you, what you've done is you took our, our curriculum, our frameworks, and you made it your own and you're doing things your own way, which I always tell people, this is not something where there's only one right way to do it. There are some practices that work better than others, but I love how you've adopted and made it your own. And it's, it's your creative expression is obvious and your energy is fantastic. Thank you. I, I'm having fun and I hope that I hope that everybody can feel it like this is, it's just a blast. It really is. Well, I know you're booked up, but if people want to come look at your website, how do they find you? All right. So find me on LinkedIn and Instagram. If you want to see what I'm publishing every day, um, Camille Pardo and on, um, I've got a a little something, something for everybody who's listening. I put together a seven step guide to write rock star emails. Ray writing emails is my absolute favorite. And, um, there's nothing that drives me nuts more than an email that is really boring and really lame and nobody's clicking. And I know it's not helping your business. And so I put together a quick guide for you and we can put the link here. Um, for you, but just like all of my little tips on adding in some personality and making your email irresistible and so magnetic that people have to click and you're just going to be getting all this cash from your inbox, which is, you know, that's king. You're so inspirational. 
got great energy. I always I talk to you and I feel happy. That's a good sign. That's what you want. You don't want a grumpy copywriter. It's There's too many of them already. Yes, we have enough. <laughs> Camille, thank you so much for being here. Yes, absolutely. It was so much fun. Thank you, Ray. And that's a wrap for this week's podcast. If you have questions about our certification, you might want to look into it right now. We have an offer at the time this is being published that's available to you that involves a personal meeting with me in Spokane. If you'd like to do that, click the link in the description below and check it out. Until next time, may God bless you and may he do more for you than you can ask or even possibly imagine. Peace to you and peace to your house.